Good morning, everyone. Today is Sunday, May 17th, and I'm so excited to be here. I hope that I get to teach you something new. We've been studying the fruits of the Spirit, and we have love, joy, peace, patience. Today is two, kindness and goodness. And we put them together because kindness and goodness kind of go hand in hand, right? So I'm going to say a prayer for us, and we're going to get started. Dear Jesus, thank you for this time together. Thank you that you are the perfect example to show us kindness and goodness. I pray that you will just continue to help us learn about you and about showing these fruits and being a light for other people. We love you, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're going to talk about two more fruits of the Spirit. I already told you them. Kindness and goodness. And the reason we're putting them together is because this story, I told you, it kind of goes hand in hand, but I, there is one story that shows tons of kindness and tons of goodness. And so I'm going to share the story, which is 2 Samuel um, verse or chapter 9, and we're going to talk about kindness and goodness. What fruit are we using for kindness? <clears throat> Well, let me give you a clue. You can drink milk from it. You can use it as a cup. You can use it as a musical instrument. They're so functional in many ways. You're right, the coconut. Coconuts are used for all kinds of things, right? And kindness is the same thing. It can be used in many different ways and all of them make the world a better place. Think of all the different things you can do for kindness. So many. Well, the fruit that we're going to talk about when it comes to goodness is the orange. And the orange is full of vitamin C. And vitamin C is essential vitamin. It means you need it. It does a lot of good things like stopping heart disease and helping you remember things. Goodness is the same way. When you're good to others, you're good to their heart, and you prevent it from being hurt, and you create good memories for them. Goodness, just like oranges, is essential for a good life. So now we're going to start our story. This is from 2 Samuel chapter 9. Saul was the king of Israel, and he was really good at winning battles. One day, God told him to go to battle with an evil people called the Amalekites, and to destroy them and everything they owned completely. But Saul disobeyed God, and he kept the Amalekite king and all the best sheep, cattle, and other animals alive. So God told Saul he would pick someone else to be king. That made Saul very angry. He decided that he would do whatever he could to stay king. Well, Saul had a son named Jonathan. Jonathan was a kind, and he didn't agree with many of the evil things that Saul did. Jonathan was best friends with David, the same David that defeated Goliath, the powerful giant. Well, remember what I told you about Saul earlier? He started to go crazy once God said that he was going to put someone else on the throne. God chose David to be the new king. So Saul was really afraid of him. He even tried to have David killed so that he couldn't take the throne from him. <clears throat> but Saul's son, Jonathan, found out about his father's evil plans. He raced over to David, told him to be careful, and he made a covenant with him, or a promise. David and Jonathan promised each other that they would always love each other and look after one another. Jonathan was in a really tough place having to choose between his father and his best friend. But he knew what his father was doing was wrong, so that helped David. While well, Saul was so mad at Jonathan for befriending David, he actually threw a sword at him, his own son. Later on, he sent the nation into battle. Saul and three of his sons died in battle. Jonathan included. David was devastated. Eventually, David became king and ruled over the whole kingdom. 
Do you remember the covenant that Jonathan and David had made? That promise? It would have been easy for David to hate Saul's family and try to erase him from his mind, but he remembered the promise he made to Jonathan. So he asked if anyone from Saul's family was still around so that he could show them kindness. A servant said that Jonathan had a son who was crippled in both his feet named Mephibosheth. David brought Mephibosheth to his house and promised that he would give him all the land that used to be his grandfather Saul's. He also said he could come and dine at David's house anytime. David is known as the man after God's own heart. What this means is that David had a lot of characteristics that are just like God. Like David, God is kind to everyone, no matter who they are or where they come from. Even if we disobey him or hurt other people, God is still kind to us. He not only gives us what we need, but much more than that. We are God's children, so we should show kindness and goodness too. That way, others will look at us and know that we, were, we are God's people and that we love him. It's how others will know that we belong to him. When they see us showing goodness and kindness to others, they will want to follow God too. Have you ever had a situation where you had an opportunity to be kind to someone that maybe didn't deserve it and someone said, why were you so kind? It makes people wonder. It's actually really a cool thing when you can um, open up that door and be able to tell them about Jesus just by you doing something nice or something that most people wouldn't do. I hope that you learned a lot today. I hope you're going to remember that story. I hope that you can remember to be good, to be kind. And I want you to think about a few things. Why is it important to have goodness and kindness? How did David show kindness? How did David show goodness? And I want you to think about how can you show kindness and goodness to others this week? Well, I'm going to pray and then we'll say goodbye. Dear Jesus, thank you for this lesson that we've been able to have together, Lord. Thank you for this example in the Bible about goodness and kindness. Pray that we can learn from David and Jonathan and Lord, we can even learn from Saul. I pray that you will watch over each one of us this week until we are together again. In Jesus name we pray. Amen.